Hey, welcome back, Akron fans, to the Christmas Tournament, Day 2 of Cass. This was this is the third game now, but before we get to it, let's go over what's happened thus far. So, thus far, we've had, today, Electro fighting Stakhanov and winning from Stakhanov's rather oddly, or odd expansion attempts against Electro's Proxy Rush, and Jericho versus Rockmox in a very long and circuitous game that involves a lot of near misses to the victory. But now we see Shalka versus Electro in the loser's bracket, and whoever wins will end up fighting J-Raccoon for a chance at getting back into the tournament. And whoever loses this match is out completely. So let us begin. So now we are on Cold Force. This is a completely new map for the tournament. Not completely new for this particular tournament, but we haven't seen it yet. And since it's not super familiar as much as Hills is, I'll go over it a bit. So, both places start... Well, first off, Electro is going for Grekum, Shalka is going for Grekum as well. And Shalka being Shalka, I imagine this will take about half an hour. So, just as a fair warning, it's probably going to be a bit of a longer game. Grekum Mirror. Anyway, going over Cold Forge. So, this map has, as you can see, the main bases at the south and north center, slightly offset with expansion in the back door, with a path that's infantry only as well going around the back for harassment. Which for Grekum is very advantageous, because they can use most of their basic units, and Octopods as well, to get back here. As well, there's a large hilly area that's infantry only, with more resources, and then a bunch of vehicle accessible expansions which are all protected by shared vision spires and comm centers. So both players have an idea of who's going to the center of the map, as well as who's taking these major expansions. And finally, there are chronopores and teleports in the northeast and southwest of the map, but they are protected by neutral domes. So, a lot of neutral structures in this map. This is the only map in the tournament that has some neutral structures that really do a lot. Tomb of Heroes has a couple comm hubs, but they're pretty out of the way. So this should be f interesting to see if the players actually take advantage of this for vision and for expansion. I've never actually seen anyone take advantage of these teleporters and chronopores. But I'd be quite interested to see if, them, if they try. Now, Electro going for a much more economic start than Shalka. Shalka is going for a moving triad very quickly. Proxy rush from the looks of it. Yeah, sending in an Octo over into the main base, not around the back. Shalka, however, did expand a bit to the back. But for the most part, his base is very spread out. And his attack coming in here will be... Very, well, will be fended off by Electro. Electro will have enough units built up to be able to deal with that. And... Shaka really just trying to figure out what Electro is up to. No, actually, Shaka's attacking with two Octos, which he did last time, too. So he is trying to figure out what Electro is up to, and also apparently trying to deal a fair amount of damage. And, once again, continues expansion, so he's... He is really embracing the Walking Triad. Looks like he's actually going to be going for this back QP crate. Large QP crate on a hill, once again, only infantry accessible. Too hilly for vehicles. And that Octo is actually... Wow, Electro is about two minutes down from here, so we likely will be able to build up units to deal with that Octo. And where is that Octo? That Octo has... Ah, here it is. So Shaka definitely will be fended off as soon as Electro builds up another Octo, but he's focusing a bit more on his economy. This may be a mistake. This is not... I'm, I'm curious to see how this works out, but I'm not confident being that Electro isn't building up. He needs about two two or three Octos to clearly fend this off. Two Octos should probably be fine, though, since both Octos were a little bit offset. They weren't coming in at the same time. Unless Shalka fixes it so they do come at the same time. And it looks like that's not quite what he did. He bought himself a bit of time with his one Octo here, but once the time comes along, we see that the Octoman question actually is completely unhindered. Okay, Electro really needs to build up more to deal with this. He's getting a Seppi, but that's not going to be any good. A Faro as well, that will help. But an Octo is needed for proper support. The Seppi's probably going to be... A, there we go. The Reef. And from there, that will help heal up. So the Faro is going to try to do what it can with Reef healing. But the Reef won't be up in time. The Faro will die before the Reef gets up. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is... Cold Forest is, as I mentioned before, Grekum does have an easier time here. So this is a bit more of a Grekum favored map. But given that this is Grekum versus Grekum, it should not be a big problem. Chalka also getting his Arcticus over for scouting more than tanking. So Shaka, as we see, very much spreading himself out, while Electro keeping himself closed in, and 
Shalka thinks he's won. Shalka's setting up a lot of bookmarks. This is a good idea, by the way. Setting up a lot of timeline bookmarks just as an aside. Really good idea to do. I like to see Shalka do that. Anyway, Electro does not have as far up in time. Another looks like Shalka's auto has been slightly timed differently, so it will be. Oh my, this is gonna be. Here we go, there's the defense I'm looking for. Electro standing up his forces, losing a Seppi, but another Seppi here to replace it, and still having the Faro and Octo will be able to build up another Seppi if he needs to. So not the biggest deal, but losing the Seppi, nah, not a big deal. Mildly annoying, but Electro, he can rebuild it, or he has rebuilt it already. He won't get the Reef early yet, but he doesn't need it that much. For healing, it's kind of nice. For tech, not at all. He doesn't have enough resources to make the tech work. Still getting that Reef will likely rebuild his, his Seppi then, and... And it looks like... No, he's actually managed to chase off Shalka's... Oct oh, Shalka's just retreating with his Octo. Which I should expect. Shalka's has a tendency to attack and then retreat. He really likes Echo Attacks. And in this case, it's probably not a bad idea, given that he's able to move his forces into position so his, a, a healthier Octo can take care of Electro's Octo. So Electro will be... So Shalka actually retreating in a situation that works well. <laughs> so Shalka retreating correctly this time. And healing up his Octos with Progen Regen... And of course his main base is completely unused. He's basically spread out completely away from his main base and proxied everything. Getting an Octopod and a Seppi as well, so he is going heavily for attacks. Not sure the Seppi's going to be used for a Reef. Shaka... Well, Electro has more resources at this point in time. He is getting advanced structures, so he's likely to get a Spire fairly soon, but no QP means he won't be able to do too much with that. No QP RPs either, he might be building some up. He should be. He's definitely moving one of his RPs over. Shaka, on the other hand, has... Let's see, three LCRPs and one QPRP. So he won't be able to use it as well if he builds up a reef. He had that Seppi built up, so that, or he's going to be building up. So that will probably be used for a reef, but it might be used just for air defense. The Autobot, however, is main assault force, and that will be dealing a lot of damage once it gets in. Not sure why our Shalka is now. Okay, so Shalka, there we go. There's the auto he needs to build up the Seppi. And. That's going to be tough for Electro to deal with. Shaka also harassing around the back. Just double checking to make sure Electro didn't expand back here, which he didn't. But very good idea. Very good movement choice for the Octos. And Electro, about a minute and a half down from Shaka, is getting himself some defenses set up. Getting a Spire Faro set up. But once again, not really a lot of RPs. Not a lot of QP coming in. It's even between the two players, but Electro is... No, oh, Electro apparently has no idea what he's doing. Well, that's okay, I suppose. But, yes, yeah, so Electro is building up a Spire. He doesn't have any QP to build up Aryan is with, though, which means that Spire is a bit of a waste. And Shalka also getting advanced structures. Shalka also in the same economic position, but... For some reason, it seems to be an advantage. Perhaps from the rebuilds that Electro had to do, but Electro... No, he had more LC, just the QP is the question. If he built another RP, which he has enough money for, he could have the QP to build up Arianus, no problem. And here come a couple more Shalka's Octos. Shalka is not sitting at an Octopod yet. And like I said, Seppi will become Reef, will get advanced structures. And Shalka looks like he's just going for defense here. Trying to take out this RP on QP. Great idea, by the way. Needs to, if he can get rid of this, then Electro's basically lost the game. But it looks like... No, Shaka is retreating. He really should just go for this. Although, being Shaka being Shaka, I should expect him to not go for things. To attack until he starts facing opposition and then run away. Because he's, that's his habit for doing that. It, like I said before, it's a very 1.2 habit. Because in 1.2, it was more important to just not have units die. And you could very easily not have units die. Especially air units. But in this case, and also, economy was so powerful that taking out one or two RPs was not worth it. It really wasn't. But in this case, it's definitely worth it. So I'm a bit surprised he didn't just go for that, lose the Octos, take out that RP, because losing this RP for Electro would be the game. He would he would lose the game. That'd be it. It'd be done. I'm not sure if Shaka realizes this, but that is Electro's big linchpin, or was at the time. Now it's not. Electro really doesn't have any... Wait. What? Did Shaka destroy this thing? No, he didn't. Electro ran it away. That makes more sense. So Electro moved that RP away, getting out of the way, but still, getting rid of that R R RP, if he had just stayed there, 
might have worked, if not running towards it. Because it looks like this RP was just... You know what? No. Actually, it looks like the RP was taken out before it even took much damage. The reef healed up whatever it did take, and other than that... Hmm. Maybe Shalka did have the right idea in this case. However, that RP not having the QP there is going to be a huge disadvantage. The Octopod looked... <sighs> Octopod should be moving in. And it is moving in. In fact, Shalka has, for the future, moved it in. But he really could have gone on the edge attack. I have no idea why he didn't do that. But he could have gone for that and dealt even more damage. Because now... Now here's Noctopod for Electro. Not building a Sevipod, though. Or Faropod, because it does not have the QP for it. And Shalka has not increased the number of resource processors he has. He has just just the four. Just three LC and one QP. That's it. But Octopod and Faro coming in, getting rid of one of the Octos that's trying to help for defense. But his Octopod on defense will be able to fend off the Octopod and Faro. Still, that's 90, Q that's 90 LC that... Shalka's gotten rid of for the cost of 45. And getting rid of another RP as well. Electro, let's see what he can do. He's not moving that RP away. He doesn't have the Chrono Energy to do so, in fact. Shalka should... Well, he should consider moving that... That Octopod back, because the Octopod here... Is actually... No, it's trapped in. Never mind. Yeah. Shalka has free reign. Shalka can just go with this. He's he's won. If he doesn't retreat, Shalka's won this game. And... Shalka does not appear to have retreated at this point. And he has quite a bit of damage in the unplayable pass, so definitely has a huge advantage. So I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised. Shalk is committing to a lot of stuff that's dealing a huge amount of damage, too. And here we go. Electro moving that reef out of the way so his Octopod can finally escape. But in the meantime, well, actually, he lost a Faro, but that's... He still lost a fair amount of resources, and Shalka reasonably running away. This is a time I would say, yes, run away. Definitely. No point losing that Octopod, especially to a healed Octopod with a reef nearby. Just retreat back from there. Don't worry about it. That's fine. But... Hmm. If Shaka had a bit more support forces, that would work nicely. And Electro, in the meantime, has actually gathered quite a few resources. He hasn't used any of them. So he could fairly easily set himself up. And Shaka's setting up a beam dome in the backyard, just in case more QP RPs come up. Interesting idea. And Shaka getting a Sepi Pod, so this should finish it. If Shaka just goes for the attack right now, that should be the game. He knows there's no QPRPs in the main base. He, I don't think he knows if the QPRP is over here. But he has an econ a massive economic advantage at this point. And he has now a military advantage since there's not much to deal with this. And the Beam Dome helping out as well because using the beams. And why is he retreating? He can win. He, uh, okay, right, right. He's Shaka. I should expect this. Looks like he's going to try to go for... Is he going for Leo class? I hope he's not going for Leo class, because if he does, that's going to just delay the game way too long. Because like I said, he has won. Electro has lost this game. And here we go. Spot Sebipod coming back in in the next iteration. Not spotting out the Octopus of the Beam Dome. Won't be able to attack it quite yet. Seeing the Spire, but... No, it looks like he's decided to move back. Sebipod being built up, so Shaka has lost the initiative advantage he had. And... What is he? Is he trying to teleport in? Yes, he is. He is actually using the teleporters. Huzzah! The teleporters are being used. And being used to go over to this expansion over here. Which both players can see, by the way. So Electro is going to be well aware that Shock is expanding to that, that QP crate over here. This comm center sees everything. And Electro, having the resources he has, he could probably build up a few more... I'm surprised he hasn't built up more RPs, actually. Like, one or two more, and then use that to help build up his economy. Because right now he has an economy disadvantage against Shalka. So he really needs to get that going. He needs to build up his economy back up. He can't obviously build it up on the QP crate. And one of his RPs taking a fair amount of damage, but that was not the best target for the Beam Dome. This Sepi Pod would have been the best target for the Beam Dome. Beam Dome, by the way, deals... I'll just switch over to Shalka's side. But the Beam Dome will deal... 110 damage. That would have the health of the Sepipod. And that would give this Sepipod a pretty good advantage in terms of what it can do. But now it looks like Electro has... He has spotted out that Beam Dome and destroyed it. So that Beam Dome, no longer an advantage for Shaka. Now it's quite a bit of cash, too. So Electro might actually be able to crawl back into this. He does have a decent defense built up. He would be able to support... He has nothing to worry about in his backyard. He will be able to build up his main base and get more RPs there. So that's all we need to do. If he gets that going, 
Shaka doesn't have a massive economic advantage. If the Feral Pod goes down, and it very likely will, because of the Sebi Pod support. Two Sebi Pods, by the way. So that should do it. Electro just needs to build another RP to get his economic advantage back, because Shaka, like I said, does have an economic advantage. He has one more RP over over Electro. One more LC RP, specifically. So if Electro can get this built up, if he can get himself built back up, get himself back in the game, because he's got a military advantage, definitely. I mean, the Sepi Pods and the Octopods, and of course, the Sepi Pods countering the Farapod here, that's going to work out very well. And, I don't know, okay, Shalka has, he has built up his RP. So yeah, Shalka, the main advantage that he has is he has all of his, he has a ton of RPs spread around the map, though he has not killed the comm center, so Electra's well aware of them. Electra's well aware of all but these three RPs, actually. So, Shalka has spread around RPs around the map, three on, three of each, and really his main disadvantage is military. He doesn't have any way of getting rid of Sepi Pods, effectively. And the Sepi Pods can just get rid of everything that he throws at him. Well, between the Sepi Pods, the Octopod, and the Faros, yeah, that there's nothing Shalka can really do to assault Electro, but the advantage of Shalka spreading out is that if Electro manages to attack, Shalka can easily intercept, so Electro really can't push out and deal with all these RPs, because Shalka can attack the main base or attack anywhere around here, so Electro has to go around the entire map. The only downside is that Shalka has still spread himself quite thin, and Shalka sending in Quidditch forces probably will be pulling these back. I don't know if he's going to stick with these. Trying to move his Epipod around to scout out, see what Electro has built up. But Electro, like I said, he, all he needs to do is build more RPs. He can support them, he can protect them. If he does that, he will be fine. He'll be absolutely fine. And he actually has taken care of one of the Octopods the Unplayable Past, which means... Where's that Farapod? I don't think he took care of that one, but I do not see it on the minimap at all. No, it looks like the far pod's in fact dead. The second pod as well. So Shalka has lost his army from the looks of it, and this is at the unplayable past edge. Like Shalka can't do anything about this. Shalka has actually lost his army. Trying to rebuild Sebi and Faro, probably gonna send them to some other random corner of the map for more triad usage. But Electro needs to rebuild his economy. He absolutely has to rebuild his economy. This is the one thing he can do, and the one thing he needs to do in order to win this game. Electro has an advantage, he just needs to use it. So, Shalka... Electro focus on the present, interestingly enough. Should be building the RPs further in the past. I know I always say macro in the present, but when you're trying to rebuild, try to go to the unplayable past edge. Or relatively close to it. Like, two minutes into the past is a good safe time to be to rebuild and not necessarily get undermined. But, just double-checking the scouting, because really he sees... he doesn't know if he sees everything. Good idea, though, checking out all the center points. This is a very, very wise thing to do. Check out all the points where nothing is overlooking them, and all the points in between crates, because a lot of times players will hide stuff in between crates, so Electro has the best idea with that scouting pattern. And Shalka not hiding anything in between crates, by the way. Shalka is, in fact, not doing anything. He's building Legal Class and three Pharopods. So, like I said, Electro... I don't know why he hasn't been rebuilding here. That's... Kind of that's really bothering me that he has not been rebuilding his base and has been pushing an economic lead. I think he might be going for chronoporting, but he more RPs would get him that faster. I mean, even with what he has, he does not have like, within four minutes. Within the playable timeline, he does not have enough money to get chronoporting, let alone use it. So he needs RPs, and I do not know why he is not building them. And Electro's pointing out in chat that he is future scouting. And yes, you are. You are future scouting. I'm I like to I'm glad you're doing that. I'm glad you're scouting the way you're scouting. But you can build RPs in the past at the same time. And these Farpods doing quite a lot of damage as well. And it's gonna be very difficult for Electro to deal with that because Electro waited way too long to get those RPs, and he hasn't actually gotten any RPs yet. Which means that's That's gonna be really tricky to work with. Oh, what the Sorry about that, let's get back to the game. Anyway. Shalka coming in to a, for a fairly powerful attack, and... I think we already, we already saw this one, so yeah, the far pods get, are gonna be pushed back. We already saw this. And... That will be... So let's see, the far pods go back here. Far pods will be retreating. Shalka are probably going to be going around, possibly going from another angle, possibly going back around here to double check what Electro has going on. And Electro, at this point, 
I think he's just, he's pretty timid. I mean, for good reason. I like, Shaka now has three cloaked bombers just flying around the map with complete impunity. So, I'm not entirely surprised at what he's doing, but I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't just out, either outright won, or... Or what? I'm not sure. I mean, Electro... Electro is in a tight spot now. He didn't have doesn't have the RPs he needs. He, he could move these RPs over and should move these RPs over. He, need, he needs his resources. Not sure what he is exactly doing at this point. Shock, on the other hand... I'm not sure if we put that Sepian Faro. I know he had another Sepian Faro. And it doesn't look like... I don't see him anywhere on the map. And I don't see anyone on the... Oh, I do see them on the map. There we are. There they are. They aren't building anything right now. Except that Octo, which they are building right as soon as they aren't building anything. So yeah, Shaka definitely has spread himself out around the map, making... taking great advantage of... of Grekum's ability to run around. And by the way, I think for the technical problem, I think it has something to do with alt-tabbing. I actually just found as I was playing around with it, the frame rate dropped, I alt-tabbed out, it went back up again, alt-tabbed in, and it's fine. So, I'm... I think I might change out how I handle communicating on the stream chat when I'm doing this. If I ever type into the stream chat. Or the... Or the Akron chat. Well, I usually... I look at the Akron IRC chat more than the Twitch TV stream chat. Though, if there's a way of getting that in IRC, that would be wonderful. Anyhow. Shaka has a wonderful air army right now. And... At Electro's point of view, he is using it to attack. Unfortunately, the Sepipods are not with them at the time, so this is not going to work out. He needs the Sepipods as well in order for the attack to actually be successful. And it looks like on the red time wave, that's exactly what's happening. So we will see it pass over Electro's point of view, and what's happened with that? Sepipods coming in. We'll be able to take care of that one Sepipod, and once they do... Oh no, there's two Sepipods. This actually is going to be a bit more of an even fight. These Faropods need to move out of the way. They're not in a good position attacking, so Shaka looks like he's going to be going back and changing that up. Yes, he is attacking from the west side now, if at all. And an Octo being used to build up around here, so he is really not concerned about Electro seeing what's going on in terms of his RPs. He just wants to build up RPs and go for it. And it looks like we have a southbound attack. So this is actually a much better position, though not by much. Electro has all of his units very nearby, and Electro actually... Oh, I'm... Totally misses. Electro actually going up for an assault in the zone and has eliminated Shaka's triad completely. So at this point, Shaka he can attack Electro's main base and they can have a base trade because Shaka has an advantage. He has another duo around the map. He could easily become a triad, and he has a really large air army that's not been touched yet. As I mentioned before, air armies are extremely powerful in Akron. So really, right now, Electro what he can do is teleport back in, teleport back to his own base. That's his best bet and defeat this army that's attacking him. He needs to do that. I don't know why he is taking, wasting his time focusing on the domes, but that's exactly what he needs to do, and there he goes. He is... Oh, as soon as he gets on here, teleporting his units back, or around. Why is he... What is he waiting for? Ah, he doesn't have... What? Oh, there's no teleport dispatch. That is true. That actually would be a problem. He doesn't have the chrono energy to do that teleportation, and... He doesn't have anyone set as a leader in order to have a teleport... ...them to teleport everyone by one command. So right now, Electro appears to have lost by poor hierarchy management. But we'll see. He may not have lost this quite yet, but his one Sepipod has been destroyed, and his Farpod coming in will be torn apart by the two Sepipods. So Shaka has torn apart his main base, and the Faro's and Oshpod here will not last against the Faropods. So Electro has lost this, but this has been a fairly interesting game. Apart from the technical issues, I apologize for that. But other than the technical problems, this has been a very interesting game, and I think I have it set up better so that it will be better able to handle any technical issues that might come up. So, hopefully that won't be a problem in the future, and Electro has... Well, yeah, Electro's lost. We're looking at further in the past, so Shalk has actually dealt more damage to his point of view. And from Shalk's point of view, he's obliterated Electro's entire army. And Electro really... Valiant effort, but he needed more resources earlier on, and he did not take advantage of that. And Shaka just managed to get a resource advantage, massive resource advantage, complete audacity too, not even hiding it. Just got one. Nothing Electro could really do about it, given that he didn't have... He wasn't sure about what he could do. Very intimidating air army. So, that was the game. So, congratulations to Shaka. Electro has been eliminated from the tournament. Congratulations to Electro for doing as well as he did. Because he did 
managed to win some games and experiment a fair amount with build orders, but I think he was going for Grekum on this map because Cold Forge does kind of favor Grekum, with especially the way the infantry only paths go. Infantry only paths tend to favor Grekum because Grekum, most of their units, most of the ground units can go across infantry only paths. I think Octoligos are the only exception and those are not frequently built. So basically, Octoligos are probably the only unit, if that, that cannot access these expansions. Every other unit can do so. For Grekum and Vec for sorry, CISO and Vecir, Vecir units can Vecir vehicles might be able to teleport up here, but CISO can only attack with air and Vecir can basically only attack with air and veer. CISO, I mean infantry and air, I should say. So it's a lot harder for them to actually deal with what's going on here. Shotgun enabling chronoporting tech, and Electro has Hmm. Electro is basically lost. I guess Shaka isn't totally sure if he has won. But that is... That's the game. So... Basically, Electro just needs to surrender. Not sure why he hasn't, if he's just letting it sink in, or if he's just letting it wait, because he has got nothing. Shaka is getting Chronoporting Tech just to really rub it in, I suppose. But yeah, Shaka's won, so that's... That's it. That's the game. Not sure if I should be continuing along with this. And yeah, there we go. Electro has surrendered. So once again, good job, Shaka. So Shaka is now... Oops. Shaka is now the winner. He will be fighting against Jay Raccoon. And then after that, we... I think that's the next game. We'll do one more game tonight. So the next game will be Trillionize versus Haiku. And that will be the entire first round of the loser's bracket. So I'll be back momentarily.